A little over a week ago, I uploaded a video that included evidence that archaeologist John Hoops had knowingly put false information into a scientific journal, specifically the Archaeoastronomy Journal, which is now known as the Journal for Astronomy and Culture. The man targeted by these falsehoods, John Major Jenkins, did not take this line down. Oh no, he wrote several letters to both John Hoops and to the then editor of the journal, John B. Carlson, trying to get that stuff retracted. Now, there is no source for the claims that were made, and the claims are still in this journal, unretracted. Personally, I find that unacceptable, and if you're watching me, there's a really good chance you do too, although some of you don't like me that still watch anyway. Love you too. So, uh, let's see what we've got here. Hi, my name's Dan, and welcome to Dunking. Politely but informing the journal is honestly the best way forward in my opinion. And that might seem weird to you because you probably assume they know what they've got in print. But there's a pretty much an entirely new staff at this point. Definitely a new editor-in-chief. So that's the person I'll be trying to, you know, win over and try to get to see, you know, hey man, maybe, maybe having known falsehoods in your journal isn't the thing you should do. Maybe you should retract this. And... Now, if you watch my videos at all, you know that like tact and PR and stuff is something I rank pretty high. And in a situation like this, that's going to be really important, right? We're writing this kind of a letter. We don't want to come across as emotional, as angry, as part of a hate mob. We don't want to give them any loose threads to pull on to dismiss our position. So I won't be including things in the letter that I'm writing to them that, it, that to say things like uh, the way in like, for example, John Hoops like threw a big old fit about the Ganong Padang paper and Dr. Nadi Wajawa and got it retracted. He was one of the people that was pushing to get it retracted. And part of the issue was there's unsupported evidence here, man. They make these claims that they can't really back up, right? He claims a 25,000 year old pyramid, but he can't back it up with evidence. But here we are with John Hoops making claims, albeit not quite as, as robust or inflammatory or, or as, you know, it's the kind of thing that gets as many eyeballs, but here we have him making claims that he's unable to support. But I'm not going to include that kind of language in the letter that I write to the editor. He's a scientist. So, Al Geraldo Aldana, I believe is his name. I'll say it better in a minute when I'm looking at the script instead of looking at the camera, but... My point is, that guy's a scientist, right? So this dude, we don't need to be telling him, oh man, you know that John Hoops, boy, he sure stinks. Eh, that's not going to do a, a lick of good. On point. This is a false claim. It was challenged. It's unsupported. If you can't support the claim and it's been challenged, you should probably retract it from a scientific journal, right? You're, you're not the Inquirer. You're not the New York Times. You're supposed to source all this stuff, right? So personally, I think that this is a cut and dry case if we present it properly. So... If you're going to help me out here, please be tactful and smart about this. Like what I think I did here. Uh, hey, I was right. Professor Geraldo Aldana, Editor-in-Chief, Journal of Astronomy and Culture. Unsourced Claims in Archaeoastronomy Journal, Volume 22. Dear Professor Aldana, I am writing to inform you of an issue I assume you are unaware of, namely the unsourced claims made by Professor John Hoops in his article, Book Review, The End of Time, The Maya Mystery of 2012 and 2012, Science and Prophecy of the Ancient Maya, which was presented in Volume 22 of your journal, which was released in 2011. On page 143, the following statement is made. The 2012 phenomenon makes much more sense in the context of astrology than astronomy, as becomes clear from the influence of Dane Rudyard on the New Age prophet and guru Jose Arguales and the John Major Jenkins, who once worked as a professional astrologer. In the same column, Hoops wrote, His, Rudyard's book, The Planetization of Consciousness, helped inspire the first whole Earth festival, while the sun is also a star, provided intellectual underpinnings for claims by Arguales, whom Rudyard was a personal mentor, and Jenkins about Maya concerns with the movement of the sun relative to the Milky Way galaxy. Jenkins challenged the idea his work was informed by Rudyard and the statement that Jenkins once worked as a professional astrologer. Jenkins wrote to the then editor-in-chief, Dr. John Carlson, explaining these statements are incorrect, unsupported, and should be retracted. In Jenkins' words, I am not a professional astrologer, never have been, and never tried to work as one. An early book of mine, Zulkin, criticized pop slash casual astrology. Hoop's intent to defame is evident in the false identification of me as a professional astrologer. To be clear, there is no question John Major Jenkins' conclusions on the 2012 phenomenon did in fact qualify as astrology. However, 
His work on a galactic alignment, as he called it, is based on precession of the equinoxes, an astronomical phenomena, and then is interpreted through the lens of astrology. This is a subtle but important distinction. I am sure you do not need to be informed of the origins of astronomy and how painstaking observations mingled freely with outlandish cosmological concepts. Jenkins' work on the astronomy was astronomy. Hoop's failing to account for the difference in the observations and the cosmology is perhaps excusable. It is reasonable Hoop's applied too broad a brush when covering Jenkins' writings. However, the claim Jenkins worked as a professional astrologer is one that allows for no speculation. This is a factual claim, one that presumably could be supported with evidence. It is not and has been challenged. To this day, the claim Jenkins worked as a professional astrologer is unsourced and this remains in print. Jenkins made certain to complain loudly of this before he passed away and many are aware of this issue. This is where I hope you will have more wisdom than your predecessor. Please retract the unsupported claims, in particular the claims Jenkins worked as a professional astrologer. In the current social environment, there is no question the trustworthiness of science is more heavily questioned than it has been in decades, perhaps even in a few centuries. Now many reasons for this could be posited, but one thing is clear. Known falsehoods left in print is one of the most damning things to the public image of a scientist, field of study, or journal. It quote unquote proves the entity in question is untrustworthy. With this in mind, I put it to you there is nothing to be gained by erroneously claiming John Major Jenkins once worked as a professional astrologer and so very much to lose. That statement could be retracted without retracting the entire article that Hoops wrote, protecting the integrity of the Journal of Astronomy and Culture without losing face. As a matter of fact, I do believe this could help create a better image for the journal. The willingness to admit an error is, after all, an admirable quality one heavily associated with the scientific method. Thank you for taking the time to read and consider these words. Sincerely, Dan Richards. Now, if you do intend to send them a letter, please match the tone of what I sent. You could even cut and paste mine and just change the name, obviously. You're not me, right? But th that wouldn't be bad at all, because the intention here isn't really to bury them with a bunch of words saying the same thing in different ways. The idea here is to is to like let them know that this is a problem, that the public sees it, and you know, get them to talk a little bit, get him to discuss it with his colleagues and, and, and get, get Dr. Aldana to consider maybe retracting that part of the article, which would be a small step, but a big one at the same time. We were actually getting one of these journals to concede that somebody in the Wu camp might actually have a point would be a big deal. But it's also, anyway... Point is, don't go hate mobbing them. If you want to cut and paste that, feel free to do so, but don't add a bunch of craziness, please. Now, as I upload this, I'm getting ready to, well, as I film this, by the time it's uploaded, I'm going to be just about ready to hop on a plane to fly to, all the way across the country to Florida to be on the Limitless Podcast with Matt Beal, which should be pretty fun. So if you haven't subscribed to him before, go subscribe to it because it is a pretty sweet podcast. He gets all kinds of different peoples on there in the community, and I'm about to be one of them. Woohoo! Uh, thanks a lot for all the support that you people have given me over the last year and a half or so, and I really appreciate it, especially from my patrons, and I hope to see you guys soon. Have a good evening.